one of my favorite places. It's a secret. But it's Amish country. And we've been coming here for 30 years or more. And this is my favorite place to park and have lunch. I thought I might share it with you for a moment. And while there's no fig trees or figs, a little too cold in Pennsylvania in this area to grow them. Although I do bring some to my Amish friends sometimes. Still, I feel very, very close to this area because of the growing. I always love, I've always loved growing things and farming. I got that from my grandfather. He was a figster too, and I've talked about him before. There in the distance, you can see the wind patterns. Look at that. You see the wind blowing through the field, and here comes a cloud, the shadow of a cloud. Look at that. Lovely. This is farm country, some of the best in the world. We make regular trips here, and I know a lot of Amish families, and they even let me go in the hen houses and get eggs when they're busy or they haven't gathered them yet for the day. I've been in their houses and I've spoken to them many, many times. A friend. Beautiful. Beautiful country. My grandfather, getting back to my grandfather, he used to say to me, he, he was a farmer, he, he loved, well, he wasn't a farmer by trade, but he was a farmer on the side and even rented ground to farm. And he had a, f a f produce stand for many, many, many years. Everyone knew him from the neighborhood. And they sold tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and corn and everything because he grew it all. And he used to tell me, he had a rule. And I never forgot that rule. Not even until this day. He used to say, no eat and no grow. <laughs> Simple as that. I say, yeah, but pop up. I'm going to grow that. No. No. <laughs> if you no can eat, you no grow. No eat and no grow. And that's the model that I ascribe to in my life. Many, 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 many years after his death. It was a real influence on me. And so, yeah, I've grown a couple things that I don't eat. But for the most part, I mean, 95%, as you can see from my videos. If no eat, no grow. Simple as that. And these people, it must be their motto, too. Because farming is how they derive a living in the world. And everything associated with that. It's a wonderful way of life. And I love it too. And so I just thought this would be a little momentary excursion from the norm. And I would post something of interest to me. I hope it's of some interest to you. All you growers out there, I think most of you will be interested to see a little slice of our regular life and how we often make trips once every couple weeks to this country to obtain our eggs and produce and what we don't grow ourselves, most of which is organic. And the Amish, of course, have horses and cows, and they put the fertilizer, the manure, back into the fields, and they cycle things, and they stagger their crops. They're just excellent farmers. They sure are.
and they've learned a good way. And we'd all do better, really, to follow example, I think, even on a very small scale in our own yards, which I've spoken of often. We could be quite productive. It's amazing. I can remember reading about the Victory Gardens uh, during World War II and my grandmother and grandparents and other people that lived back in that era. They remember the term Victory Garden and everyone was encouraged by our president back then, Roosevelt. And then later Truman. But they encouraged us to grow things, grow things in our backyard. To make a contribution to the war, to the war effort, and because things were being rationed, and there were shortages everywhere, sort of like now, <laughs> shortages, and there are shortages due to the COVID-19. The prices are rising and of course, the supply is diminishing. Prices rise when supplies diminish. And so we can do ourselves a favor, especially if we're organic growers, which I have promoted time and time again. We can make a contribution to ourselves and to greater society, actually. And those people that are less fortunate, that don't have yards where they can grow things, well, perhaps the supply will be a little greater because we're not diminishing that supply as much. So we're making our contribution to them too and to greater society. So much for my sermon today. With that, I hope you're enjoying your summer. I hope you have your little methods of getting away from the ordinary. making little excursions to the places that you love too in your life, wherever that may be. I have many, my wife and I have many places where we go and we love them all. It's right now about maybe the 8th or 9th of, of June, 2020. Good day.